Today on the podcast, Kayla and I talked to another Kayla, Kayla Yule. Kayla with a Y. Kayla with a Y. We love her. We are making her our new mom friend, whether she likes it or not. Yep, it's happening. (laughs) And we talked about everything from the identity crisis of motherhood, particularly in the entertainment industry. To growing balls. We talked about that because whoever thought about if you have a baby boy, you have grown. You're making balls. You're not yeah. growing. Like your your body you made is balls. making balls. You made balls. Yeah, we talked about that. So before we get into the episode, make sure you go follow us on socials at Hi My Name Is Mom Official on YouTube at youtube.com slash Hi My Name Is Mom and go follow Kayla at Kayla Yule. Uh, Kayla with a Y, E-W-E-L-L, and go follow her podcast. It's called Directionally Challenged. I can't wait to share this episode with you. Okay, let's get in it. Okay, let's do it. This is Hi, My Name is Mom, a podcast about motherhood. Here are your hosts, Jen, Corey, and Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Uh, hi. hi. I'm so happy to talk to you guys. I'm, I'm so glad I'm you were Kayla, jumping on. Yeah, this, this is, is Corey. I know. I, I, I love the spelling, by the way. Yours is so unique and different. I'm very weird. I have to tell you something, too. I don't so know your if name's you... Your name's fitting. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Yeah. but I'm going to tell you this, Kayla. This Kayla, she has a daughter, and she wants to have another daughter and name her Poppy. And she's been telling me this for years. So her daughter's name is Poppy. Mm-hmm. Really? And, and I have to tell you, everyone loves that name. There's, it's so funny that even we were in the bathroom yesterday at a country club oh meeting gosh. Santa and I was using the bathroom and my daughter was sitting outside and someone was like, oh, I love your dress. And I was like, hey, Poppy, can you say thank you? And they're like, oh, but I love your name. So it's it's definitely, if people love the name Poppy. I did not I know that. Go for that- it. I kind of saved it for right now. I'm not going to lie. Oh I'm like, my if, gosh. if she doesn't know yet, I'm going to wait to so tell her. So my daughter is Loxley and... So we had Loxley Ray or Poppy Jean. Those were like the two oh. names. And she came out and I was like, oh, she's a Loxley. Mm-hmm. But Poppy is our front runner if we have another girl. And we also like the name Scotland, like S-C-O-T-L-A-N. Really, and then she could That's be Scotty, cool. yeah, which so, is really And cute. I'm like, I want twin girls, a Poppy and a Scotland. And so I'd have a Lox, Pop, and Scott. Like, <laughs> oh my God. It's like a Pop and Lock. You yeah, haven't really thought like, about this at all. I know I like pray about this I put it out there like I it's gonna happen now do twins run in your family no but it's gonna happen she's manifest no she's praying for it sorry she gets mad at me when I say manifest I I get mad I just correct you I pray (laughs) so you have one how old she's two and a half oh yeah okay so you still have we we were around that time we were like that's when we should around when she was two we were like we should probably try this again and then we I, tried it real fast and we were like, oh, are we ready for this? Here we go. We were that's amazing. immediately it happened. So, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and you have a pretty little one, right? Right. So baby. there's there's a whole story that we have a new boy. His name's Jones. He's six <gasps> months old and he's my favorite thing in the world right now. <laughs> Don't tell my daughter. I love her, too. But, you know, when they're oh, little babies, when they're that, in that little baby phase, it's the best. Um, he's technically four months. So his adjusted age is four months because he was preemie and he came two months early oh my gosh it was uh listen the first time with my daughter poppy easy breezy we didn't really have to worry about anything so i just figured it would happen again right like the exact same thing would happen again no worries my body knows what to do here we go um woke up one morning in a pool of my own blood Oh. And my husband rushed me to the hospital. Luckily, his sister lives a few blocks away and was able to be here in under four minutes with her glasses on and her retainer still in. And she came. And um, then we rushed to the hospital. And a few hours later, he was here. So it was was he okay? Shocking. Because that's very early. Very yeah. early. Very early. So technically seven weeks exactly to the day. And... um yeah, he was fine. I, I, don't, I don't. It was a miracle. Not even just going to. It was his APGAR score, which is what they use to measure, you know, baby yeah. sight and hearing yeah. and all that. We'll tell you sort of where you're at, especially with preemie babies. And he was instantly um, nine out of 10 was his APGAR score. And my mom looked at me. She's like, I don't even know if your APGAR score was nine out of 10. So I think you're good. I'm like, okay. that's amazing. So he was in the NICU for five weeks, but it was solely for bulking up because he was 3.9 pounds. Then he went down to 3.65. So that's so tiny, you know. 
and now he's almost 15 pounds he's just so much better so uh it's definitely been a, an interesting path for us this time around because we just assumed it would be exactly the same and it just goes to show you have no control no power you have no idea what's going to happen even if it's your own body yeah it's so true i feel that way i've been pregnant eight times and so i feel like each time it's been so different but when i was pregnant with my daughter it was so in all my other pregnancies, I've been immediately scared and I haven't accepted it. I would She's never... that, she had a rough journey of it, and obviously. Yeah. When I got pregnant with my daughter, it was like this weird, like, I can accept this. It was just something totally different. But mm. you're just never guaranteed anything. Pregnancy is so unique at every single journey. Like our we're just amazing beings to be able to like I mean, we're basically superheroes. We, like, make fingernails I mean, and are. eyelashes. What did you do today? Like, <laughs> I said to my husband, I was changing my son's diaper, and I looked at him, and I was like, I can't believe I made these balls. And my husband just, like, burst out laughing. And I was like, no, that was an honest thought in my head. I'm looking down at him. I'm like, Like, what? you made that. It's crazy. I, my body made that. How did you know how to do that? Um, but cool. did, you, did you guys love being pregnant, or did you hate it? I feel like everyone has such a different experience with it. Well, you can speak to this in your own unique way because she had to do all all of these things, right? Like, all these. I was in the hospital quite and... a bit, and I was on uh, multiple times a day um, Lovenox shots uh, for blood thinners, and so I just felt really icky. Um, mm. But I was so happy. She was so positive because I, she was just so happy to I be. Think she was it like, was great. "I feel like crap," and then she'd go, "I feel, I feel like crap." I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm grateful. Right. I'm like, it's I'm fine. Like, I think it was great. It was great. Yeah. My daughter's here. Like, I was very sick. I was throwing up about ten to twenty times a day. My teeth have oh. taken a beating from that pregnancy, but um, I, it's a, it, it's fine. I mean, I, the things we go through the to have through. children. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And I had three C sections, so that was probably the hardest. And each of those, I feel like my pregnancies were similar. You're um, so pretty pregnant. Oh, I so did not pretty. feel pretty pregnant. I mean, that's are. a really great thing because, <laughs> you. you know. It's, I was it's, waiting for the glow. Hard. I'm like, when does no, the glow it, come? Wait, what? <laughs> She she's she ha she's suffering from body dysmorphia anyway, like in a real way. So we we just we have to tamper down those things. She was gorgeous when she was pregnant. Well, and I think everything you're going through in life for some reason just gets magnified when you're pregnant. I mean, not for some reason. It's because all those hormones are like pulsing right? through your body all the time. But it is it's it's a while. You're ride. making balls. Yes. Like, yes, exactly. You're very you're busy balls, making balls. <laughs> well, I was curious about your experience in the world that you live in. Because I feel like as a normal person, you get pregnant and you can eventually, you know, when you're ready and you're comfortable, you go to work and you share that you're pregnant and you can be at work as someone who is pregnant. Right. But in your line of work as an actor, <laughs> you might have to go to work and be a not pregnant person. Right. No, that's such a good question. And it's something that my other actor friends and I talk about all the time because it is the only job that exists that can take you out of work for solely just bringing life into the world. And yeah. so let's say you were pregnant eight times. That could be a solid eight times of 10 months of no work. So you have to make a solid decision to yourself. Is this something that's right for my family right now? Is this something that's right for me right now? Can we financially do this? I mean, it's a lot. So Listen, there are some people who work and while they're pregnant and it just happens for them and it's incredible. Um, I have some friends who have done some pregnant modeling and I say, go, go get that dollar. Um, but it, you have to be creative and you have to find other ways to work. And it is hard. It's really hard because listen, if you're going to go out for a character that is supposed to be alluring, uh, they're not going to go with the pregnant woman. Now, I will say because of the pandemic, it was a lot easier to hide it because a lot of the... Um, um, a lot of us actors put ourselves on tape for auditions now, especially since the pandemic. And you can hide a bump pretty well. Um, you remember a scandal uh, when Kerry know, Washington would be just holding a very large handbag? Right. Oh, and that's, that's what they do. You're always carrying a plant it, or like groceries, <laughs> you know, there's something or like that you're those doing. big parka jackets and you're like always right. like front angle. It's never right. Side. And you just assume you had a lot of <laughs> sodium the night before. Right. Just a little <laughs> totally. puffy. I was really grateful because this last pregnancy, I'm uh, recurring on the show, The Rookie, and they wrote the pregnancy in. And my character's oh, sort of cuckoo and crazy, and she plays an I am I play an actor within a show 
show in the show and they just wrote the story they actually are brilliant and wrote it that i my character got pregnant so then i just got pregnant in real life and it, it was so smart of them now that's yeah. not always the case and so i felt really grateful this past time because they did that they could have so easily just decided to not especially with a character that's recurring you're not guaranteed a certain number of episodes so yeah. it could have just been like bye see ya um i did have to do a Let's see how big your belly is, and like lift the shirt up and show them. Like, can well, yeah, because the progression of a character in? is right. not like, the same, right? Right. Um, but I'm so grateful that they were so accepting, and um, I think that times are changing when it comes to that. But I still think there's a lot that we are fighting against when we're pregnant, and it sucks. It's hard. Yeah. It's a really, it's really dis. It's just discerning that that is the way it is, and there's only so much you can do about it. But um, luckily, podcasts are also a thing. I have my own podcast, so I knew okay, if I um, I can do this while pregnant, there are certain things you can do while pregnant. So um, I was good. I was I was okay. But um, that's not always the case with everyone. So that's well, and such I'm going to circle question. back to that to your podcast because we've both been binging it. But oh, I have to <laughs> I have to directionally challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have to admit that I was one of those. Crazy Crazy actors. I shot a movie, pregnant, but it was tricky because so my husband and I are very happily married. We have three babies, but it was a huge surprise when we got pregnant. And I had already taken the job. Mm -hmm. I didn't find out I was pregnant until almost nine weeks for a series of. I, I did know how babies were made, but there were a bunch of things that <laughs> happened where like I'd always had irregular periods. I thought I had a light period. It was implantation bleeding. Like all these things happened. Uh -huh. And then I and then I started feeling nauseous, and I was like maybe. Maybe I should make a test. What movie was it? Can you say? Um, it was called Devil May Call. It was me and Tyler Mayne, who's like this massive it sounds guy. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Guess we know what we're watching tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. And you'll be like, she was growing a baby. But I, it was a very quick shoot. And I had just had, I think I had like just had my 10-week appointment or something like that. So I just had to approach the director and just like tell him what was going on. It was a weird thing because I felt like I had a secret I shouldn't have. Mm. But I also felt like it's my secret to have right now. Yeah. Um, so it was a really, that was a <laughs> strange thing. Would you have felt different had it been a female director? Pro probably. And I have never thought of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and honestly, the director was so kind. I mean, so kind. He was like, first of all, congratulations. Like he had such a beautiful reaction. Um and everyone was amazing. And I ended up, oh, he was really the only one that knew. And then he was looking out for me. And I think he talked to the stunt coordinator. And right. then I told wardrobe, like, at the end. And she's like, I knew. Like, I saw your <laughs> belly changing or whatever. She's like, but, but secretly buying you, like, size bigger pants yeah, and, like, putting yeah, them in your just trailer. Slipping them in there. You <laughs> said you were a normal person. Like, you're not a normal person. <laughs> How did it's... you two meet? <laughs> Let you tell the story. I'm, I told you, I'm weird. We were at a mutual friend's 30th birthday party, and this one walks up to me, and she goes, hi, I'm Kayla. Which size shoe do you wear? And I'm like, six. And she's like, oh, cool. We're about the same size. We should be friends so we can share closets. It's a good theory. It's a good theory. Because listen, like I love a good sh friend share closet. It, for me, that reminds me of college so much where you're just like, hey, you wore that dress last week, but I can wear it this week, right? So let me ask you this then. Are you like, what do we want for Christmas? Okay, you ask for that. I'll ask for this. And then we can have a full wardrobe. We, she, we do that with our daughters. My daughter they, looks like her daughter's doppelganger, but like a year, like a, her little sister. Like they like, look like little, uh, little, yeah, like they little look, sister. They look alike. There's things that I'll buy for my daughter Loxley. That it's like, oh, it's okay, but it'll look really cute on Teddy, and I know she'll get it in like six months, and so <laughs> I will just like that buy is it so anyway. cute. That's a, that's a real friend. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. no, she's she's a, yeah, she is a great friend. Uh, like everyone needs wow. a Kayla in their life, right? That's well, right. Well, what's what's that's your mom funny. life like right now? Like having two kids, mm. I feel like it's a major change, and we have three, right? So three felt like we had like seven more kids. <laughs> But obviously, like, you had this time during the pandemic and everything, so you were pregnant during a lot of that. I, right. So our daughter was six months when shutdown completely oh, happened. Wow. Six months old. And okay. my husband is an actor as well. He's on a soap opera. They were the very first show to go back to work. And so very early on, he was testing every day and working all day every day. And sometimes he does two episodes a day. They do, I mean, yesterday, or no, tomorrow he has 63 pages of dialogue. So we're talking like, oh we're talking like ex an extreme amount of work, right? It yeah. takes so much focus. So for me, 
the shutdown was a huge transition because we went from Tanner, my husband and I were both working on Roswell on the CW together when my daughter was first born for the first six months. And it was amazing. We would travel back and forth. And um, sometimes we were both in the episode. Sometimes it was just one of us, but we would, um, they had a little apartment there for it. it. The whole experience was incredible. And then we went from that. So I, when my daughter was six weeks old, I was on set instantly after I had wow. two birth. Do they have sitters on set? That might be a no, weird. No, but they put an extra ticket every time for me to fly someone with me. So um, we didn't have a nanny at that point. So we either my mom or my husband's mom made it work for us to go, which was that's really a cool. big deal, though, to it's be six weeks postpartum. Like that's in the mm-hmm. throes of Ooh. no sleep. And if you're yeah. nursing, it's like such a job of its own. Yeah. So yeah. that I'm sure. And then so do, were you already working on the show and then you paused to have yes. your baby yes. and so I, back? Yes. Oh, on okay. the hiatus. I, and it wasn't planned that way, but just on yeah. the hiatus, I ended up having her oh, wow. and then went, went back. And for me, I look, looking back now, I'm really grateful that that was my transition because I think it was really important for me to feel uh, productive during my postpartum. And it was a wonderful way for me to kind of feel learn the balance yeah. of the two and um then when the, everything shut down it was it went from tons of support working around all these people with a baby to literally my husband leaving early in the morning and working all day and i was just i couldn't even hand her off to someone to use the restroom right yeah. so it was like one of those it was night and day and obviously we all felt like the world was ending right so you throw yeah. all of that on top of it yeah. it was one of the most trying times in my life because it was just so lonely i think motherhood alone is lonely especially the first time you go through it yeah. and then if you throw the pandemic on top of that it was it was excruciating. And because my husband was working and testing every single day, we weren't even letting anyone in the house. So my mom would call to be like, can I help you? And I would say, I wish you could, but he's brand new on this show and we don't, we don't want him to lose this job. And it felt so like he could at any second. And also we didn't know how long the pandemic was going to last. So it was important for him to work. And so I just stayed at home all day, every day with the baby. It was so hard. It, that I, identity crisis is like yes, so yeah. real. And not like there wasn't even a park. Parks were closed. I couldn't even yeah. take the baby to the park. Yeah. I couldn't, you, you, you didn't go to the grocery store. You would you'd order groceries and wipe your groceries down. Like yeah. I never left the house. I was scared to take her for a walk because we didn't know how it was contact uh, contracted yeah. so it was just the most extreme experience i've ever had so this time around <laughs> feels a lot less difficult because uh not only is it our second child but everything's open and yeah. there's classes to go to and i have mom friends and he's working but he's not brand new at the job so it's not as you know it, he's more yeah. relaxed about it and so even though this time around the pregnancy was so difficult and obviously it was we were shocked that we had a baby two months early it still feels easier than the first time interestingly mm-hmm. you know with what you went through and having the support and getting comfortable so many people aren't comfortable handing their baby over to anyone yeah even even a grandparent or something in those early days and you were comfortable with that and thriving in that and I so feel that whole thing of feeling fulfilled because I think when you have been like all three of us on this podcast have always been working like always been like career driven and it was such a hard shift for me to become surprise pregnant as an actor, when you feel like you can't say no to anything or you're not going to have another opportunity, it's like, I mean, you know, it's like, oh, I'm in Europe on vacation, but there's a really, really big audition. And so then all of a sudden you're like, you know, you move heaven and earth because you feel like you have to, to stay relevant in the industry. And then these little humans happen and it's just a whole different thing. But I think that feeling of who am I now? What am I supposed to be doing? I obviously love and want to pour myself into this little human. And I also feel like I have lost myself. It is a truly like difficult thing. And our husbands and partners can be as supportive as anyone can be, but they don't go through a physical change to have a child, not just the physical side of growth, but like all the hormones and all of the, you know, all the things that go along with being... (laughs) 
worthless nipples. But for, you know, it's interesting because you guys, I know her story, you know, because I was a part of it. But for you to feel like, I got this, I can do this, and that be ripped out from under you. And then with Kayla, her baby was born at the beginning of a pandemic. And so we had to, after like a year and a half, go like, you have to go somewhere without her. Mm -hmm. And because she had truly just never been away from her, had a hard time getting a sitter, still kind of does a little bit. I'm like, yeah. you guys haven't been on a date, you know. We and- still, we went on our first date. <laughs> my daughter was two and a half on my birthday this year, wow. my 35th birthday. And we went two miles down the road for like an hour <laughs> to get a burger. <laughs> Like, it, I mean, good, good job for doing that because that is hard. And I, you're not alone. I have a lot of friends. Yeah, but that here I am still too. breastfeeding my two and a half year old. Like, come on. You know what? I, that, but see, that's how did beautiful. this happen? <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, that's what's beautiful about motherhood because I only did it for, for four months for both of my kids and was like, nope, I'm done. Okay. I, I did it. I've done my allotted amount. The pediatrician says you can stop. Okay, cool. I'm done. So it really is a completely different experience for everyone. It's and that's so why I nuts. think these pod, podcasts exist about it. There's so many books about it because you can never know what's ahead. Right. You never know what's ahead. And so I say good for you. Like, hand, <laughs> I, I'm serious for doing that. And finding what works for you. And I think you have to let go of judgment of anyone's experience because everyone's going to do it differently. And so just do you, you do you, whatever that is. And if you can genuinely find it within you to not judge someone for doing what they're doing, great. Now, listen, like if you're on the street and someone's like holding their baby over a, you know, over the, you're going to interview. In actual danger. Yes. Like, like, let's be real. Yeah. There's a line you don't cross, but mostly if you're just trying your hardest and you love your child, there's not a lot. There's so many opinions, but there's no right or wrong. It just was really like. Just don't smoke in the car with your kids. That's like. (laughs) that's my judgy that's that's where my judgy mom comes out that's the line you have to cross for kayla i've i've never seen that that's a good line that's a good line (laughs) yeah that is a reasonable line (sighs) come to the south do you find that you're so you went through all that so do you find that now with your new baby like do you feel like you're like i got this are you like back to work you got the help you got the support you said it was was easier even despite the the crazy early birth but What's on your mind, like, as a mom now? Like, where are you okay. now? Yeah, that's such a good question. The hardest part for us right now, because he's technically six months, but he's still four months in size, oh, yeah. is we're still doing the newborn wake-ups. Yeah. Six months because in, of, we're still... Because of his weight? Because of his weight and the size of his stomach, can he can only eat so much right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, my nephew, who was born two months later, is the same size as him, oh. and my nephew's nine weeks going to be 10 weeks old so you know we're still dealing with a really tiny little one so he's a four month old you've just had him for six months like you just had him on the exactly. outside for six months e- exactly yeah that's exactly what yeah. the situation is and so we are exhausted Aww. we didn't do you know uh, some people here do the night nurse and the all that stuff but we wanted to be the ones to be there for our kids every time when they woke up all of that and so we both work so we have na- a nanny during the day who is incredible and we love her she's like family Um, but she has kids of her own and her own family as well Um, but then you know at nighttime it's us but it's really difficult when he's shooting and I'm doing there's so much going on and we're both so exhausted so it's hard I don't know if that was the right decision I still think it was but I do see for the first time why people uh, have help even if it's just grandma or whatever in the middle of the night um, to help you because we're both so exhausted still and we're six months in so that I think is where my mind is right now how do we make that transition um we've been using the snoo i was gonna ask i was just going to ask have you used the snoo yeah (laughs) it's amazing we love it he but he was in the snoo in our room and now he's in his own room so now everyone's in their own room and it's good and um but it's still pretty difficult honestly so we're it's a it's a whole new ball game for us with a preemie baby well yeah i mean you know when you bring home a baby who's even what is it like under seven pounds, they make you wake them up until they hit certain marks. And so you're just dealing with what most moms would deal with in those very early weeks on an ongoing basis. Yeah, that's, it's a lot. That's stressful. Like that's especially having to check in and is he gaining the way he needs to and all of that. Yeah. And and then honestly, my husband left for a month to shoot a Hallmark Christmas movie, which is adorable and awesome. Ooh, but which I was one is it? Bought. Okay. It premiered 
last night? So, uh, what's today? Today's Monday. Yeah. It premiered sun- Saturday night. Um, Christmas class reunion. Oh my it's gosh, we need to watch it. With Amy T. Garden. He's adorable in it. And he, spoiler alert, he gets the girl. But he was in Vancouver for, it was supposed to be three weeks and then ended up getting COVID. So production shut down and they extended it another week. And uh, that for me was the most trying experience to have a three-year-old and a new baby mm-hmm. um, by myself. I think we're all in the same camp of like people have to do what's right for them in terms of nannies and how Help. but we're mm-hmm. we all three are like no I want my baby to know when they wake up in the middle of the night it's mommy or daddy but that truly is a lot to carry yeah especially when lot. you have an older one that also needs your attention it's been hard for her to get used to having a little brother and that he's here to stay because a lot of times she'll go I want dad to take Jones and I want you to be with me mm-hmm. and so what we're trying to do is no well we're all going to do the puzzle together as a family yeah. instead of you know separating into two different things but it does you also want the individual time with them too so we're just kind of we're learning what works for us but yeah she she was two years ten months when he came into the world so similar ages and Aww. it's just um does she like but does then, she, even though she wants him to leave sometimes, does she like him? Is she, I was wondering if a, a big sister seems like it might be different than a big brother. Oh, she's, uh, she goes, oh, Jonesy. <laughs> oh, Jonesy. And she comes up and just kisses him. And there are times when I'm like, hey, could you get him his passy? I'll do it. I'll do it. Runs to the oh, fridge. And do, oh. She's very much a helper, which is great. Oh, what a little um, And yeah, no, definitely an empath, which is which is a good thing for, you know, a big an sister. Older sister. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like it's when a baby is 6 months that you finally start to feel like a human being again. Right. And I was just having this conversation with my husband today and I don't know if you felt this way, but um but I was telling him that like I feel like <laughs> this seems extreme, but I feel like all of the various hormonal shifts that you go through, I feel like it takes me two solid years to feel like my brain functions correctly mm-hmm. again after having a child. Yeah. I had said a year was when I felt like, oh, okay, I could maybe do this again. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I remember now who I was before. Oh, yeah. okay. For me, when I hit that year mark was when I felt... I, I, I don't know. Did you? F- I, I felt like when I just had a baby, oh, no, now I'm myself again a few months in. Definitely wasn't the case. Oh, yeah. no, no, now I'm now I'm myself again. Oh, no, no. And it really wasn't until I hit that year mark that I that I was remembered who I was. Yeah. Um, so I'm at that six month mark. I'm definitely eager to get to the year mark. But then I also don't want him to grow up too fast. So, you know, it's that I think we're enjoying it more this time around for sure. We are more sleep deprived for sure. So it's just a whole different experience. But um, um, we did feed him banana for the first time and he loved it, which was so great. That first time you give him yeah. food is like the best part. And like the best. make the weirdest faces. Yes, he loved it. Well, we, we started with avocado and he did not like it. Not his jam. And we were like, oh, you're a California baby. We're going to do avocado. Right. And um, then we were like, okay, we'll try banana. And he loved it. Aww. Grabbed the spoon, put it in his mouth again. So, And listen, it, this is completely pureed and mixed with his um, milk. So We were not judging your <laughs> banana judging. feeding. Well, I'm just, you know, for anyone listening, <laughs> And it's like, oh, yeah. I guess I should feed my six-year-old oh, a giant yeah. banana or a six-month-old a giant banana. Just bite. feel it down. Here you yeah. go. Oh my gosh! You, and you truly just never know. Which honestly, yeah. that prop that I'm curious about that too. I mean, you know, with you and your husband both being in the entertainment industry, I'm sure you get judgment. I think that's the most difficult part. Yeah. How much do you share? How much do you not share? Um, social media is a huge part of being an actor. Obviously, um, there's also that from the business side. Uh, partnerships that come in as well and so it's how much do you want to share versus how much do you want to make and how much do you it it is so difficult and I really want to there are times that I go through that I really want to share my kids and then there are times that I'm really nervous that those photos last forever and do they not want to be shared and will Poppy when she's older ask me why I put a photo of her in her bathing suit yeah when she was a little girl on the internet you know yeah. and so it's really difficult and isn't it sad that we have to think that hard well, about sharing a cute it picture I, my daughter it yesterday i shared it with you <laughs> i'm not gonna share it online because i had that conversation with myself you're gonna no but you can tell the story i'll tell the story so my husband was hanging christmas lights and he was on a ladder and my daughter was outside helping him and she goes daddy daddy i gotta go i gotta go and he's like okay we'll go inside and let's get mommy because he was like fully outside clothes and you know and so yeah. she goes, no, no, he's coming out. So she pulls her pants down and takes a poop in our front yard. <laughs> and he sends me 
two pictures and I'm upstairs in my office working. He sends me two pictures. One is him like on the ladder and she's like pulling her pants. <laughs> like, And then the other so one funny. is literally like her squatting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely don't share that photo because that will be that will haunt her. Right? And that's the thing. But it's so funny. It's and, so funny. And, and, and I was and like, oh, great. my gosh, this reels bonus plays would go up. <laughs> well, my husband recently shared. So my husband is in like the well, I would call it the radio industry, but he now works for Apple. And so Her it's husband's kind of the really same. cool. He's a big oh, deal. I like him. I like him. But he <laughs> recently shared this video that I am like, I really hope our kids have a sense of humor because this is out there now. And I, <laughs> I laughed so hard and I felt so bad. And I was like, well, it's already shared. Okay. So my, yeah. my, my four-year-old and my nine-year-old were doing this like back and forth song and it was just completely adorable. And so my husband's filming it. I wasn't home and he's like, this is so cute. And then all of a sudden my precious four-year-old, he's like, I paid my pants. And he loses like, it. He's like, and then he was fine two seconds later, right? Like he recovered like that. Right. Yeah. And he was like, I paid my pants one. And it's like Adam Sandler all of a sudden. But in that moment, I was just like, I laughed so hard. I cried. And I also was like, I laughed. you posted that. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I really hope we teach our kids to have a sense of humor and like yeah, laugh at Yeah. That. I mean, here's the thing. As I don't know what it's like to be a kid with parents in the spotlight because I didn't grow up that way. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, we just got to do what we can do and then see what happens but if i'm sure they'll have a sense of humor and also that's a really that's a funny life moment it's so crazy to think that our kids generation is the first group of humans growing up with constant never knowing media. life never, without like, it yeah that's crazy like their baby pictures in the hospital are posted online like that's from, true from that's a really freshly good hatched like they're coming out and everyone do has opinions on that do your kids because my fear is when i take poppy's photo she says mama can i see it because she knows it's on my phone yeah and that is weird to me that in you know we are i when i was in high school we had not polaroids but like the um and you had to wait and develop the, disposable them. Yeah. cameras oh, yeah. and you had to go de uh, develop them and it was all part of the process and yeah it just it's lost its magic a little yeah. bit yeah yeah my That's oldest right. does that and i'm like uh, I wish you wouldn't ask me to see the picture, even though I'm yeah. going to look at it. And then my four-year-old is like, mommy, no pictures. I don't want a video. I my don't want you to make a video. That. And I I respect his boundaries. For anyone listening that's like all on just like us and trying to figure it out, I think a good solution that we found, if this helps anyone, I don't know. But we have those shared albums that we share with our family and close friends. Yeah. And so it's not even on social media at all. It's just a shared album that everyone belongs to. And I think there are times that I want to share something private. And then I go, no, 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 I'll just put it on the shared album. And then people can like it that way and see it. And then talk about it. And so it still feels like a special moment that I'm sharing, but it's not on social media for everyone. That's a great idea. And I know that's I what they that. were doing with the close friends app yeah. or uh, close friends part of Instagram, but it still is uh, to me, that's different. I guess when so, I think about it, anyways, like I text my mom and my sister and my dad, I'm like, look at this cute picture. Yeah. But it's also like, I don't want to be a part of the problem, which is like a whole set of people who feel like they're not experiencing something in life if they're not sharing it. We went on vacation. We went to Florida in September and <laughs> you and I weren't even on social media. Oh yeah, I put entire, my phone away the whole yeah, weekend. Yeah, the whole, it was awesome. It was amazing. We I had, had my, a guest who who recommended that like a forty eight hours of just yeah no phones, and it was awesome, like a media cleanse almost, yeah. or like a device um, cleanse. Did you think? Did you think clearer? Oh yeah. After well, and I found that you know sometimes when I'm frustrated with my kids or impatient with my kids, it's because I'm trying to return an email. Or trying to do right. and and really yeah, it's right. not then then I'm like I just need to focus for a second and they're interrupting my focus whereas I'm not actually annoyed with them I'm annoyed at my focus being interrupted and my thought in my head is if I can just get this done I can focus on them yeah right but that's but they don't know they that don't know exactly that. and yeah. exactly the crunchy mama and me is gonna come out here for like two seconds and then I'll put her back away <laughs> okay. um, but let her fly. So there's so much research that too much screen time for your kids is is bad, right? For brain development, mm -hmm. for focus, for attention span, for anger issues. And now they're like researching that this same type of focus happens with adults having screen time, whether it's productive screen time or like casual browsing. There is an actual personality shift if we have too much screen time. So I truly try to and I'm not great at it just because I get busy and tablets are easy for kids, right? 
but um, I try to really limit my daughter's screen time, my screen time, so that I'm not having those negative side effects from it because I I work mm-hmm. from my phone like everybody does nowadays and we're on it 24 seven and even Instagram is a job. Right. And so it, it's really, <laughs> it's really hard sometimes to like find that disconnect. Yeah. I do have to say though, having kids is the reason that I'm able to find the disconnect yes. too. just to, just to play the opposite um, end of that spectrum because before it felt like, Oh, well it, now I can make the decision to throw my phone away and not even worry about it yes. because this little thing in front of me is so much more important than any of that. And any of those emails can wait, right? Like it, it, it you'll, it'll be fine if, if yeah. they, you, you turn in whatever it, it, within the, within the hour or whatever it is, you know? Um, yeah, that's the, that's the sole thing that I've realized is my children make me want to get off my screens because there's yes. something more interesting happening, you know, which is really good. Oh, yeah. I remember not watching TV for months after I had my first child because I was like, why would I be watching the TV when I can watch this little thing? My favorite is when they go to bed and you're like, oh, thank God they're in and bed. And then you watch them. And then them? two minutes later, you're watching yeah. the videos oh. of them that day. That's what we do. Anytime we go on vacation <laughs> away from our kids, we immediately just watch videos of them. It's the funniest thing. But that's how so much of mom life is, right? It's like a roller coaster because you're like, I just need a minute. And then you're like, oh, I miss them though. I miss them. And I'm, you know, with, with kids a little older, it feels like, can, can you guys just not say mom for four minutes? Mm. But like you just, all you want is to hear that word. It's just, so, it's so confusing at times. We're just like, mom, 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 mom. And then you're also the moment you're away from them, you're like, I miss you. It, it really is a very mm-hmm. confusing relationship. <laughs> I um, I have a question for you. So coming from the music industry, I felt like after I had my first miscarriage, I felt different. That mom thing in me just clicked. And so when I would walk into meetings, I actually pulled away from the music industry after my first miscarriage just because I felt like I shifted so much. But there was also this part of me that like some people knew that that we were trying to have a baby or that was where I was and so I felt like there was an immediate lack of interest in me professionally as soon as people Mm. saw that there was like a maternal aspect at all in my life there was like a shift professionally where I just felt like I wasn't getting calls I wasn't getting co-writes there was just there was a change did you feel like there was a shift professionally once you had your daughter or once you got pregnant I think I tried really hard for there not to be okay. because I expected it to happen. Okay. And I knew that ho- the second you have a baby in Hollywood, everyone looks at you differently, right? Even if even when you're married, it, so- it sounds terrible to say, but people don't necessarily take that as you're off limits in a lot of industries. The, the, uh, not right? in music just really either. gross, <laughs> right? Music, enterta- just entertainment in general, yeah. I think that doesn't necessarily mean that you're off the market. Yeah. Um, but once you have a child, it is different and they view you as a mother. And then how but dare I try- you step out of, <laughs> wow, right. you're like, a mother. <laughs> um, I think that for me, I felt pressure, not initially, when I, when I went back to work on Roswell, I did not feel pressure at all because the showrunner and creator of the show was a friend and also a, a female. And so what a she gift was really that job was I know. Then. No, truly. Like I, I felt so much support from the very beginning. The character was not the vixen role, which I also really appreciated, um, especially with my body in the state that it was in and um, breastfeeding and all everything that was happening. Uh, I mean, I was doing night shoots in the middle of a desert with a newborn baby. Wow. It was really, <laughs> yeah. really hard. And going back to the trailer, and having to, I remember one time I brought the pump, but I forgot the, the, the charger. And so I was having to hand express in the shower of my trailer. I was just like, this is, this is too hard. This should not be this hard. But then following that job, I played uh, Nocturna on Batwoman, which is her nemesis. And it's a lot of tighter clothing. Um, also a lot more badass. Of a vixen, That's amazing. Vixen type yeah. role. Uh, my daughter was five and a half months uh, at that time. And so Good I Good for you. For like... Thank you. But I still did not feel that I was where I sh- should have been. You know, there was so much that went behind that because I thought, well, everyone watching this isn't going to know that I just had a baby, right? So there yeah. was just so much. And I remember the episode starts with a lingerie scene and um, the character that I was playing, like, you know, seduces this man and then eats him and whatever. <laughs> like, like you do. <laughs> of course, like you would. Um, but and I just had this massive 
amount of anxiety about having to do that. Um, and that was, it was almost crippling. And then what I did was speak to wardrobe about it and they were so understanding. And then it was a male director and he may not have been as understanding. And so it was just difficult, um, for me to have that experience. And, um, that was when I first realized like, oh, okay, this is, this is changing and it will probably always be different. But, um, I think my husband's really helped me through it too. Cause he's just the best. And even if I'm, you know, covered and spit up, he's like, babe, you look great. Aww. You know, and not that you need to hear that, but, you but do. sometimes you need you to do. hear you do that. Need to hear yeah. That. Um, even so the most confident I, of women need to hear that, especially yeah, when you're, no, you gotta even if it. your body still looks amazing, it's just different. It feels different. It's like, you know, breastfeeding boobs feel heavy. We just did yes. a whole episode about postpartum body image. And one of the things we talked about is that for us, we're not on anyone's timeline. So why are we putting so much pressure on ourselves? Yeah. Because right. truthfully, you know, cutting calories too much when you're nursing is not a great thing. And and so you no. were in those other shoes. Right, right. But also not only that, this time around, I feel like I was able to give myself more grace. I bought myself a few pairs of that pants is that key. were two sizes that is too key. big. I just because, did that. I just bought oh. my first pair of pants that were a size up and it was so hard. And I'm like, I'm two and a half years out. Why did it take me this long to accept that right. my hips just widen a little bit like <laughs> and and guess what like there's just more i i truly mean this it sounds so cheesy i need to preface it but there's more of you to love like hips are beautiful and that's amazing and women's bodies are beautiful that i i in fact think i mean i'm not necessarily a curvy body but i've always wished i was because i think that that's even from you know the medieval paintings women's bodies are just beautiful and so i think that we can celebrate that i, re I really mean that and um i'm learning to do that and i too, think everyone because... is I'm, the industry is right like the, yeah. the fashion yes. industry the like everybody is embracing that which is such a beautiful change from like I remember I'm I'm only like five feet tall and I just was never <laughs> scared I remember someone telling me like if you could actually look slightly emaciated in person that would look best on camera you know it was just like you know like I think the, the, the fact that someone told yeah. you that too oh, is just I, so I mean, the, okay. the most horrifying you're like I went you know that. I was like yeah I'm 4'11 so we're both short and weighed like a hundred but on camera that doesn't matter really truly matter. like but people like, don't I know a like hundred pounds i was like tiny but i was super fit and i remember i was working with a producer at one point and he told me he's like if we're going to do a music video for this you need to lose about eight pounds and i was like what like that that's crazy right right, and, right. but i don't know i don't miss that part of it at all are you are you gravitating towards different types of roles or jobs at this point in your life I always wanted to do period pieces and big, better material. Not so, you know, I've traditionally done a lot of work with Warner Brothers and the CW and it's a lot of um, the teen shows, yeah. which I love to watch. There's nothing wrong with it. I truly love to watch it. I grew up on Dawson's Creek and Felicity and all of those shows. So I truly love them. But as an actor, the actor side of me, not the viewer side, yeah. the actor side has always wanted to do something with a little bit more meat totally. in it. And, um, and I, so am I gravitating towards that? Yes. And is that something I really want to do? Yes. And so I've actively had conversations with my team about that. But listen, here's the thing. I also understand that what I've done forever is what works. So I also am not going to fight against it if something That's like that comes into my life. a fantastic attitude. You know? You're open to any of it. You can always put out there like, yeah. hey, here's what I would love to do. And that probably will come your way along with the other stuff. Yeah. Which is great. Thank you. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. That would be the if best. If there was one role in a movie that you've seen that you're like oh I wish I could have done that role okay well I always my favorite movie is A League of Their Own <gasps> and I always loved loved that's the Gina Davis character do you know that's like and one of my top favorite movies it, oh my god is it really so my my stuffed animal growing up was named Kit oh. after the sister and I still have her this is so but long story short my I have her now and Poppy both has both of mine and my husband's little stuffed animals oh, that we had growing yeah. up and so whenever I'm sick she will bring me Kit oh, she's into, so into the bed she's so sweet she's so sweet she's here mama here's Kit and um so no I genuinely so there you go I love that movie and that Gina Davis role I thought would always be so fun because it's period piece but it's yeah. also strong 
strong women yeah. and all there's just so much about that movie that i love there's also a wit and a humor to it you know it, it but it's a drama there's so there's just everything it's sort of like the balance and the culmination of all the roles i've ever wanted to well, play well that all that actually one. makes me cuz we don't want to keep you forever even though i feel yeah. like we could just talk to you all night um <laughs> totally <laughs> if you're coming to nashville we have to like go grab dinner yeah Deal. absolutely please let us know if you come to nashville would love that'd be that. so fun they well, I was going to ask you, you have a podcast called Directionally Challenged. I love your why, which the way I understand it is that yeah. as you were getting into your 30s, you're like trying to find direction. So you're you're talking yeah. to people who are smart mm-hmm. about things. Yeah. And so I was wondering what have been the biggest takeaways for you where you're like, that changed my life or that really made my life better to learn? Right. That's that's such a good question. Um, the first thing that came to mind, just as you said, this was perspective. I feel like we've had so many people from, you know, really young YouTubers who seem to have their life completely figured out to a Holocaust survivor and her story. And so when you talk about a full spectrum podcast, yeah. that is exactly what Directionally Challenged is. But I love that because nothing's off limits. And so what I feel like I've recently, and I think the answer to that changes and evolves because we do have an episode every week. But recently I'm learning about boundaries because I am a yes person and I have always tried, right. It's me. Always tried to. (laughs) Gosh, I love her so So much. I I love her. Um, (laughs) But it's one of those things that like, you know, I'm not good at boundaries at all. And I knew I wasn't good but until we did an episode on it I didn't realize that it was an actual issue in my life and I love my family I love my friends my people are everything but it's to a detriment to my own detriment and I need to learn to set boundaries so after we just did an episode on that I you're right I I jotted down a bunch of notes she our guest said to me I have a seminar coming up if you're interested in taking it and I thought this is exactly what I need to do so it's just furthering myself and you know, in a month from now, am I still going to be working on that? Maybe not. It's also overwhelming because there's so many things every week <laughs> that when I that when I promised myself, we did an episode on weed and how to walk into a shop and buy weed because I, it's legal, but I have no idea how to do it. And I'm so Same. nervous to do it. That I'll never do it. <laughs> there's one right down the street from us and I still have yet to do it. And someone came up to me this week and was like, so how was it? Did you do walk into the, into the weed shop? And I'm like, I haven't done it yet. I'm you end up having so like, much homework from the podcast. Just, You're like, I've <laughs> so totally. much homework yeah, but like if you don't want to don't do it if you do want to like no it's... totally i mean i would i think I, sh- I should and i want to i do kind of want to but then i just never find time so it's one of those things where i want i want to learn and grow um but it's almost sometimes too yeah. much so i do have to pick certain sure. things um but i would say perspective in general when we interviewed the uh, holocaust survivor i just left that actually weeping crying so hard because her perspective on life and everything she was grateful for she has this beautiful story about m&ms and what they mean to her now and i'm i swear to you every time i see an m&m i'm what just season by it. So, did you do that episode i want to go and listen to mm, it I, it was i believe it was 2020 or 2021 it was while we were during quarantine it, we what were, a great we were time to have a guest like I, that though. um I went mm-hmm. to um, Yad Vashim, which is the largest Holocaust museum in the world in Israel, and I spent eight hours there. And so it's like three floors, and it walks you through um, everything in the Holocaust. And the first floor is it's just the propaganda and and like the marketing that they used to brainwash. Like, and so and then like the top floor like you literally see the shoes and like the hair clippings and it's like mm-hmm. suit like you see everything and it's it was so life changing and i've always been fascinated by world war 2 and so i just i think the perspective on anyone that has gone through that massacre mm-hmm. is just going to be life changing itself so and I yeah, no absolutely I love that you went from listen, YouTubers to like Holocaust survivors right no and then I was gonna say like we had Rachel Bilson on I listened and to she that episode about the OC and her perspective okay and I loved that because I feel like you know that's something that's a show I was I did three episodes of but I was really a huge fan of and so to hear from her perspective that whole thing I, it's it's like lighthearted but then it's also heavy and you kind of never know what you're I loved get, how you vulnerable know? you were on that episode and you said that you went back to your small apartment and you guys couldn't afford to like go to a celebration 
celebratory dinner and mm-hmm. but you wanted mm-hmm. to and so you had the viewing party and you were on a yep. budget and like your dorm apartment thing i was like that's so yep. cool because that's the entertainment industry in a nutshell it's like you're either like broke or you're making it well when pe- and even yeah, when you know, start yeah. making it it's not nearly as cool as people th- like you can have a little bit of success here or there but it takes a lot of those little moments to lead up to like a payout that like changes oh your my life gosh. and does it and ever. i yeah, loved it's... how vulnerable you were with that and just like open and honest I just, that's a Thanks. beautiful thing about you is like <laughs> you're... thank you that means so much but honestly that's what having the podcast did to mm-hmm. me and i think i i think that probably that's what you guys were referring to too is that like it it opens you up and you have to be real yeah, yeah. and you can't um, bs you also learn a lot about right? yourself <laughs> you know we were introduced by a publicist Mia? that we both worked with oh. yeah and you work with Mia? I don't anymore, but I worked with her years ago, and Aww. I just love her so much. I, I just, I, she to me is the epitome of the best kind yeah. of human. Ugh. Yeah, she's awesome. Her. But Mia, <laughs> Mia had had said like, oh, you guys would probably love to talk to Kayla. She's awesome, and she just has like a you know great story, or whatever. And at that point, I didn't realize that you had a podcast, and I'm so happy that us talking introduced me to your podcast because I I, I'm gonna I love to I love <laughs> listening to podcasts but it's very rare that I'm like I'm gonna follow this and I'm actually really excited for another episode I to come up same oh, yeah you guys I can't thank you so yeah. much that means that means so much because you guys know as you put your heart and soul into something and you put it out there and you hope someone likes yeah. it you know well so, and to be however well, many years I, deep you are like you know it, yeah, it's a, right. it's a big deal so anyway we are grateful you. for you taking the time with us yeah. and also grateful for what you're putting out into the world because it's meaningful it's and helpful. and I think it is hard to understand who you touch when you are putting it all out there but like you can you have you know two right here that like definitely yeah yeah for sure can i come back you guys are the best this was so much fun i feel like i just hung out with friends and um these conversations are important because i think motherhood can be really lonely and isolating and you guys are breaking that so thank you oh my gosh thank Thank you for doing that and um i'm just so grateful you guys are so fun (laughs) i wish we lived in the same we would be mom friends i'm like we we would be mom friends we'll go to la we'll go hang out we will end up and i used to go all the time anytime well where please please let me know where where can everyone find you and is your podcast on all the platforms tell us where everybody can it's on everything directionally challenged is on all platforms everywhere you listen to podcasts it's available and uh my personal social media is uh my full name kayla it's pronounced my last name's yule it's Oh, one, but it's spelled E W E L. I definitely did not yeah. say it right. I said E well okay. on my Instagram stories. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry you know what people probably knew who i was based off of that because it's a weird last name but i'm totally and you're the cool um, kayla with the y well we're both the cool <laughs> kayla, i second that sure um but i thank you guys so much i'm so grateful truly i really mean that this was really Yay. fun like, it was really. amazing talking to you we're friends uh, seriously now. yeah no we're fine what's your no, shoes done size? done <laughs> done and done the Hi My Name is Mom Studio is brought to you by the Yard Sale Store. Check them out at yardsalestore.com and on socials at Yard Sale USA.